Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Greg. I want to go over the uh, markets uh, real quick with you, crypto markets, and put some stuff together that I'm looking at because right now everybody is not everybody, but a grand majority of people are so sure that uh, Bitcoin is going to continue to go down. I do think it's going to go down a little bit more just looking at the uh, data. I got some uh, stuff that I wanted to show you guys, but just going based off statistics, the reason why I'm uh, looking at doing small percentages of DCA into the um, into Bitcoin is it's down basically 75%. If you check these other big waves right here, they're, they're more or less about 85% right there, 84. And this over here is like 86%. Uh, what's the downside risk? The downside risk is another 10% down to nine or 10,000. I don't think it's going to get down there. I still think there's going to be a swing back down probably below 17 and then maybe 15, 16 area. Um, based off this uh, wave count where this is a fourth wave right here, this fourth wave can go, it's not invalidated until it hits this point right here, guys. That's basically right around 14,000. 200, 13,800 or something like that. So it's not invalidated until it gets down there. And just looking at the weekly uh, RSI, it's it's down pretty low, guys. So the odds are pretty much in my favor. Now, what are the risks? Here are a couple risks. This is the probably the worst. The worst risk is more downside, but it will come back up. Okay, obviously down to say you get in at 17, it goes down to 12. That's the downside risk. But with what I'm planning on doing is, you know, stair stepping down as it goes down and just deploy a little bit more at a time, small percentage. Now, as far as alts are concerned, I'm going to go over that briefly and explain something there about alts and what I think could be going on. So here's here is what I think could be the worst worst case scenario. It comes down here and then it it can just consolidates kind of like this for a while. Okay. So why that is bad is because that's a bad use of your capital where Bitcoin's just hanging out in those areas for long periods of time, say, who knows, maybe a year as an example, and your capital's not working for you, you're not doing anything. That's a risk. There's another risk where, let's say, it comes down and it goes into this wave, if you want to call that a risk. So if it does go up in the wave like that, say an X wave, a B wave, or some corrective wave, and then it could swing back down like that. I think the probability of that happen, happening is small, but it could. You can't rule anything out. Anything in the markets could happen. So I'm just looking at it based off statistics with Bitcoin and what's going on in its previous history and also showing too, like people are so worried about interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. I showed in the previous video, previous videos that I did right here, the Fed started raising interest rates right there, November 2015, December 2015, and it went up. And it just seems like people want to ignore that fact that it literally does not mean if interest rates are going to be raised that markets will go down. They can go up. The S&P did it. Bitcoin's done it. And previously, I'm not saying it's going to happen this time, but there's a chance it could happen just based on what I'm looking at, that it's going to go up and, and might uh, there's a probability that it could make this uh, next wave up on Bitcoin. Okay. So that's where I'm looking at it. I don't, I just think it's, it would be foolish not to think that it start considering and going, Hey, these are really, really good areas and, and smart money or smart investors are looking, Hey, these are really, really good areas to start considering it. Now, if you want to wait, you can wait. It's going to go down to 14 or 15. Yeah, but are you ever going to be able to get the exact bottom? It's not going to happen. That's why people DCA in, you know. So the reason I do it, I'm doing it now, is just here. here's the, the case. So let's say Bitcoin comes down and then you're waiting for the bottom. It maybe does a little bit of a bounce and it comes back down. You're, you're, you're waiting for, say, 12,000. Like everybody says, 12,000. Well, let's say it goes only to 14 and then it's off. If you never have any capital in there, you miss it. That's the other risk too that you have to consider and taking a look at that. So at least if you have a little bit in there and it goes up, you don't miss it. And if it continues to go down, you can continue to DCA a little bit in at a time, small percentage. Now, I in this point of the time in the market, I would be very careful with the alts and I'm going to go over the, okay, before I do that, let me go over the oil chart. There's a gentleman on uh, right here, Jim. 
this guy on my YouTube channel. Now he brought up a pat, a, a good point. He thinks it's a fifth wave failure and that's a big deal. He seems that he trades the oil. So he might pay more attention, more closely, closely to it than I do, which is good. So he's talking about a possible fifth wave failure. And if that's the case, then the oil chart, this oil chart is going to come down and this is going to be huge. This is going to take out inflation. The reason I say that is that oil is more than just putting gas in your cars. Oils and plastics. You need oil, petroleum products or petroleum products. You need to make computers, refrigerators, cars, plastics, uh, medicines, all of that stuff to comes from oil. So if this goes down, this is huge and very beneficial for other risk on assets such as traditional uh, stocks and, and, and Bitcoin. So that's huge. I want to bring that up. If that is a fifth wave failure and he, he could be right, that's very bearish for oil. So we could see maybe less than $100 on oil and start trending towards, you know, 90s and then 80s and maybe even the 70s, guys. And that will be big. So and as far as the USDC, a lot of people are talking about, I want to bring this up. This is uh, an area that I'm looking at on USDC chart. I know this is a boring chart, so nobody likes to go over it uh, or, or pay attention to them. But this is big. This is people are going into USDC. There's a big talk in the cryptoverse. Well, why is Bitcoin dominance chart going down? With They're flooding into the USDC. You can see that it was coming down. I was looking at the uh, dominance chart a while back, and they said it was going to go up to 70. I'm like, no, it's not. It's going to crash here soon, just like it did. Just like it did, because they're going right here. They're going right here. They missed, uh, I guess you could say that they missed that. Now, here's the thing. Is, is this in a fifth wave? Coming up to a fifth wave, complete it. But it's taken on this four-day chart, you can see it's taken out that peak. So if that's the case on this four-day chart, this third wave just moved over here. The third wave extended. And this is why I'm saying that there's a probability that Bitcoin could be doing this uptrend right now that it's doing over here, coming up a little bit. Let me go to the uh, two-hour chart. I'll show you guys. Coming up a little bit and doing these waves. These are very overlapping waves on Bitcoin right here that it's doing. Very overlap, overlap, overlap. And can you get a bullish? You could. I looked at it. You can get bullish out of it, but you just don't know until it's done 100%. But it could be up and then the swing back down. And the reason I say that is just looking at the data, looking for your third wave peak. So here's the third wave there. So this first wave, second is a third wave peak here coming down and now it's in a fifth wave, okay? Taking a look at this chart. And I'm just looking at like say the, the three-day chart, you see how it, it hasn't taken it out completely on the three-day. So the three-day looks a little bit better. I go down to the daily, you know, the daily looks a lot better, okay? You see right there on that chart. So here's the third wave peak. So, you know, that looks like a good fifth wave. So on the daily chart, it's like this. Okay. So maybe it's coming up to, to complete that fifth wave. Just don't know yet. But if you come back out here to the four day chart, you, you know, you kind of get a little bit different picture where that momentum took it out. And now, this third wave, that's how you find your third wave peak, guys, right here. Your third wave would have been here. Now it's taking it out. And that's what I'm talking about when an asset erases divergence. So here it had divergence, erased it. Now your third wave is right there and it comes up and it slides right. It's, it's going to come into correction and maybe do a fifth wave move. So you can see with this move, I'm going to take all this off right here. I'm going to take it off so you can see it a little bit more clear. So here's your first wave. So it might need to come down and come back up to complete that whole wave correction. So like this, guys. So it'll be, because this first wave is so small, and then that's the third wave, down for a fourth, and then a little minor fifth wave up again to make this make more sense to me. So yeah, if that's the case, people are going to exit a little bit of USTC, which they're doing right now, right? Because they see Bitcoin go up. And just how it is. That's just how the psychology and the, uh, you know, the psychology and the, the mental uh, behavior people in the market. So they're going down and then it's going to Bitcoin go back down and then it'll go back up. That's how I see it. Um, going over the total too. 
Here's what I want to say look, about the, uh, the, the altcoins. A lot of the older guys that have been around since 2017, I wasn't around then. But one thing you have to consider when it comes to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other altcoins, the market is starting to mature. Just because they had altcoins that here's Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin's dominance is at 70% and the altcoins go basically to zero. That's the whole thinking right now that the alt the bitcoins dominant 70 percent altcoins going near zero that's that's the whole thinking but look at the whole big picture if you take a look at bitcoin so i'm going to go back out here to the uh, weekly chart guys if you take a look at bitcoin as as an asset let me go out to the two-week chart give a little bit bigger picture here okay you look as it as an asset guys um you know bitcoin over here there's a wave that's missing you can't see. It rocketed up, correct, rocketed up, corrected, and rocketed up. And Bitcoin was in its infancy. It just started out. It was, it was like, this is like an old coin over here, you know, just started, bam, and boom, up like that. You can see now with the waves that these days for Bitcoin making these massive moves are over. Or over. I'm not saying it's not going to make massive moves, but something like this, that's over with for Bitcoin. Will it still make massive moves? Of course it will. But not anything like this, not anything like this. More than likely, the probability is really low. But you can see now that Bitcoin is changing. It's a different, it's a different asset. This, this over here is different than over here. So what I'm saying is that the market, as far as Bitcoin and altcoins, Ethereum and things, the market is starting to mature. So I want to go over the, uh, the total market cap and looking at this. Uh, that includes everything but Bitcoin. And I have a uh, Fibonacci retracement on here, guys. And it hasn't even hit. If I count this as one, two, three, four, it hasn't even hit the 382. It just passed the 236. It's doing a shallow retracement. It's doing a shallow retracement. Now, my other argument to for altcoins is that if you go back to 2017 and look at those coins and kind of just look at them, they were pretty much useless. I mean, you had Ethereum was still developing and you had other coins out there trying to do their things. But for the most part, the only thing that they were, were a, a coin that you bought and you put it in a wallet somewhere and you stuck, kept it on the exchange or put it in a wallet and hope go up, right? That was pretty much what it is. It wasn't a Solana that had, you know, uh, or a Phantom that had all these people going there and hanging out and, and hanging out in the layer ones, developing their uh, their decks and 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 then developing uh, other portions of the uh, the chain that have people come out there and hang out. I just think it's different. The, the market, the crypto market is maturing and to say that, okay, we're, we're uh, in bear market now where uh, Bitcoin goes to drops 85 to 90%, altcoins, all of them are gonna go near to zero. I'm, I'm not buying it. Things are changing. The market is maturing. Let you guys know that. Do I think that uh, the altcoins could go down a lot more? Is there a lot of risk holding those assets right now? Yes, there is. I think the best, not financial advice, the best place to start looking is, is Bitcoin. But maybe things are changing. Maybe, maybe we don't know yet until this all susses itself out. You know, maybe Bitcoin is not going to be the major player. Maybe something is going to take over here in the future. We just don't know, guys. Anyhow, that's food for thought. Those are my thoughts putting going on to the market with uh, total two cap, the Bitcoin, the oil chart, the USDC chart kind of things. What I see um, lots of panic in the streets and blood in the streets and fear is at its highest that it ever was. And this is the time. This is not a seller's market. This is a buyer's market that we're in right now, guys, to be looking for opportunities right now, in my opinion. I know it's going against the narrative in the mainstream about interest rates and the quantitative tightening with the Fed. I'm telling you, that's what I'm looking at, and that's the direction that I'm going. If you made it all the way to the end, I do appreciate you. Thank you. Hit like, hit subscribe. Peace.